I think if you're working with kids in general, but challenging kids in particular, you need a philosophy. Who is this kid? What's he about? What's he up to? If he's up to anything, because you see your philosophy is going to guide your actions, especially when the going gets tough. No philosophy, no guide. The most important theme of collaborative problem solving is this one. Kids do well if they can. Now, nobody ever falls off their chair at the sight of kids do well if they can. It's only an earth-shattering philosophy. If you consider a much more popular alternative philosophy that floats around out there called kids do well if they wanna. No, kids do well if they can, and kids do well if they wanna are two completely different philosophies. Let's, and they have completely different ramifications for what you're going to do to or with this kid to make things better. Let's think about kids do all if they want to for a second. If you've got a kids do all if they want to mentality and you're working with a kid who's not doing well, then the reason you think he's not doing well by virtue of your philosophy is because he doesn't want to. I've been thinking about kids do all if they want to for a long time and here's the conclusion I've come up with about kids do all if they want to. It's wrong. Flat out, dead, wrong. I ask myself, why would any kid not want to do well? Don't all of us do the best we can in the circumstances we find ourselves in? Well, the kids do all if they want a mentality has those questions covered with concepts like secondary gain, attention seeking, unmotivated, coercive, limit testing. We're going to have those babies put to bed by around 11 a.m. this morning. When you really think about them, they don't make much sense. When you really put them to the test, they don't make a great deal of sense. But l let's say they do make sense. Even if kids do well if they wanna is right, and now you know I think it's wrong, it's narrow. Because you see, it greatly narrows the role that you can play in the life of a kid who's not doing well. Because if you think a kid isn't doing well because he doesn't want to, I can only think of one thing for you to do, only one role for you to play in the life of this kid. Make him want to. And we have the technology for making kids want to. How do you make a kid want to? You reward the behaviors you like and you punish the behaviors you don't. You give him the incentive to do well based on the belief that he didn't have the incentive to do well in the first place, and you are now in the business of making kids wanna. I sure do hope you're right about why he's not doing well, because if you're wrong and you're busy making a kid wanna, and he already does wanna, you run the risk of making things worse or at the very least, not being as helpful as you might have wanted to be. I'm a kids do well if they can guy. I think if this kid could do, could, could do well, he would do well. Something must be getting in his way. Your role just changed. Your role just changed. You've just flipped from thinking a kid isn't doing well because he doesn't wanna, and therefore thinking that your role in the life of this kid is to make him wanna, to something a lot harder and in my experience a lot more productive. You've just shifted to kids do well if they can and what's your main role now? Figure out what's getting in his way. Then you can help him. You can't help him if you don't know what's getting in his way. Biggest favor you can do a challenging kid is to finally at long last be the person who figures out what's getting in his way. Because you see if he's still challenging, it's a pretty surefire bet. Nobody's figured it out yet. The key theme of collaborative problem solving, the key philosophy, if you remember nothing else from everything I say, I hope remember that if this kid could do well, he would do well, because kids do well if they can.